Good afternoon, Vikes. Today we have your weekly sports highlights. And the theme for the basketball game. I'm Darren. And I'm Ryan. And this is your daily news. There will be a boys tennis meeting today at 315 in the Commons. The Fine Arts Showcase and the Variety Show is February 1st. The show begins at 7. Seniors who are interested in the scholarship for yearbook go to room C2 or the counselor's office for an application. Applications are due February 14th. Outside date forms for Snowbar are now available. Grades 10 through 12 see Mrs. Varner and Mrs. Naylor. Congratulations to Derek Quinn, Mason Clark, Cole King, Reagan Props, and Lucas Herla for winning Centennial League for Scholars Bowl. Now after this commercial break, we will go over to the sports with me. Can I just get a large caramelized coffee? Living in Kansas, we are frequently threatened by heavy rains, large hail, tornadoes, floods, and even snowstorms. Be sure to listen to the SVTV Weather Report daily so you stay informed. And now for your SVTV 5-day forecast, which shows the... Whiteout or collegiate is the theme for tonight's basketball games. Seaman won the city swim and dive meet for the third consecutive year, taking first in 10 out of 12 events, setting a new city record in the 400 freestyle relay at 318.66. Here are some of the placers. Now let's kick it on over to your weekly sports highlights. Saturday at the Octagon of Doom, where it was throwback night for the Wildcats as they hosted the 24th ranked TCU Horned Frogs. The Wildcats started off hot, leading by as much as 12 in the early going, but the Horned Frogs would storm back to trim the lead to three. The Wildcats would lead by eight at the half, and the Wildcats never looked back. Dean Wade led the team with 20 points as the Wildcats would defeat the Horned Frogs with a score of 73 to 68. We transition over to the Fog where the Big 12 leading Jayhawks would host the Baylor Bears. The Hawks started off with a huge run leading 16-3 in the first four minutes which included four three-pointers. The Jayhawks led by 11 at the half but that was when the Bears went off trimming the deficit and eventually taking the lead. The Bears were up by six with two minutes left but the Jayhawks stormed back finishing with a 9-0 run. Seven of those points coming from sophomore transfer Malik Newman. He led the team with 24 points as the Jayhawks escaped Baylor at home with a score of 70 to 67. Let's move on over to the NFL where last Sunday was Championship Sunday where we determine who heads to Super Bowl 52. We start off with the AFC Championship between the Jaguars and the Patriots. Jacksonville started off strong leading 14 to 3 in the first half and they led 20 to 10 at the start of the fourth quarter. But the Patriots did what they do best as they stormed back, scoring 14 unanswered points to defeat the Jaguars with a score of 24 to 20. The Patriots will head to the Super Bowl for the second consecutive year as Tom Brady will look to get his sixth Super Bowl title. Now to the NFC Championship, where the Minnesota Vikings would take on the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles started off hot, putting the pedal to the metal and not letting off. 
Former Kansas City Chief Nick Foles threw for over 350 yards and three touchdowns as the underdogs would win once again as they headed to the Super Bowl, winning with a score of 38-7. to The Eagles will go to the Super Bowl for the first time since 2005. We head back to college basketball as the Wildcats go on the road against the Baylor Bears. Barry Brown and Dean Wade, the dynamic duo, put on a show as the Wildcats would lead by as much as 19 and did not trail for the entire game. The Bears tried to storm back, pushing the deficit to within five at the half, but with the Bears close on their tails, the Wildcats turned on the accelerator. This is Wayne Wright for the stop and an one! Brown would finish the game with 34 points and push the Wildcats to 5-3 in the Big 12, winning on the road 90-83. K-State has not trailed a game in the last 100 minutes and 28 seconds of play. The Wildcats will play next on Saturday against Georgia in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. We now head on over to Norman, Oklahoma with ESPN's Game of the Week as the 5th ranked Jayhawks face the 12th ranked Oklahoma Sooners. KU and Oklahoma both had their share of runs in this game. The Jayhawks forced National Player of the Year contender and freshman phenom Trey Young to only four field goals in the first half, the lowest of his young career. Young would go off in the second half, however, finishing with 26 points, 10 of which being at the free throw line. The Jayhawks led by as much as 10 in the second half, but the Sooners' effective strategies and clutch shooting would give Oklahoma the edge. Kansas senior Sviatoslav Mikhailuk would have a team-high 24 points, which included six triples, not enough to push the Jayhawks over the edge. KU suffered their first road loss of the season with a final score of 85-80. to Let's take a quick look at the Big 12 standings. Despite their loss, the Jayhawks have a one-game lead with a 6-2 and record against Big 12 opponents. While K-State, Oklahoma, West Virginia, and Texas Tech each have a 5-3 record, all four teams tying for second in the Big 12. Season is far from over, with many tough tests still remaining. Let's go over now to our big news of the week. We go to the NBA, where LeBron James joined the 30,000 club this last Tuesday. That's the man they better double team. That was his 30,000 and 30,000 and one. LeBron has become the seventh NBA player to score 30,000 points in their career. He is also the youngest player ever to achieve this milestone. We finished off with our epic moment of the week. We head to Ohio State as they face Penn State just last night where every team's biggest dream and worst nightmare happened in one clip. Just take a look for yourself. Tony Carr! What a great week in sports. Now let's blow it on over to weatherman Josh. It's another warm and windy day out there, Vikes. We do have a wind advisory in effect until 6 o'clock this evening. But later tonight, the wind should let up as we, as we head deeper into the night. We'll also bottom out at around 30 degrees. And then we'll rebound into the middle 50s for tomorrow afternoon. And on your SVTV five day forecast, you can see that we cool down every day through Monday before rebounding back to near 50 on Tuesday. But don't hold your breath because in the next five days, you can see that we do hang on to the warmth on Wednesday, but that all comes crashing down late next week. 30s and 40s for highs through the weekend. Today in history, it's National Green Juice Day, and Ellen DeGeneres turns 59. Now, back to your anchors. That's all we have for today, Vikes. Don't forget to come out and support your Vikes. Have a great rest of your day. Just bounce to this. Bounce, 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 bounce. Oh,